being made redundant, having 27 plus weddings booked in the diary, which financially would have carried me well into this year, plus other functions, etc., all being cancelled. being cancelled. How do you how do you go from that actually not having any money? By definition, an underdog is a competitor thought to have little chance of winning a fight or contest. For me, an underdog means something completely different. An underdog for me is someone who fights back, someone who bites back, someone, someone who, who doesn't, doesn't give, give up. up, someone who keeps on going. That no matter how difficult the fight is, we don't give up, we keep on biting. We all have the underdog within us. Welcome to the Underdog Bites Back. Welcome back to another edition of the Underdog Bites Back. I'm here with one of my favourite people, DJ Milk Tray. I've chose him to be one of my special underdogs because I feel that his journey has been nothing but fantastic. You know, like when they say started from the bottom and now we're here. I believe he's not even there. He's not even where he's supposed to be, wherever he's ordained to be. He is just still on the journey. But while he's on a level where I can still talk to him and get an interview, (laughs) I've asked him to come on. So... Thank you for coming on. Hi, Cal. Hi. How you doing? Do you know what? I am really good today because every time I see you and I'm around your energy, I feel it. Mm-hmm. And that's because you are, to me, someone that I admire so much. Thank you. You've not stopped since the day that I've known you. You keep <laughs> on going. And I'm really interested to work out how you're able to do that, especially with adversities. Mm-hmm. So... To put it in context, when we look at adversities, what would you say is the most challenging thing that has happened in your life to date? Losing my grand and my aunt. What did that do for you? Um, Because I was raised by both of them. Right. So Caribbean home, you know, that whole growing up with grandma, mm. that kind of thing. My aunt lived at home. Mum and dad had just purchased a house in Thornton Heath. So we live in Ballam. My entire family grew up between two different streets. So my dad's family were on this street. Mum and mum's family were on this street. That's how they met. Um, and then grew up with like my aunties, uncles, cousins. Like, you know, that whole tribe kind of community. Yeah. Crazy. That ethos. So, um, my aunties then moved out of my granddad, my dad's side's home and then bought, bought houses on my mum's side of the family. Okay. So we moved from this road. To that. <laughs> they moved to then that road. So we just grew up with my entire family. Um, and then my gran and my auntie Paulette were at home. And then mum and dad bought a house in Fortin Heath just before, or just, I just started infant school. No, second, no, not secondary, primary. I just started okay. primary school. So they didn't want to take me out of school. Yeah. So for me, um, I grew up with my gran who, when I was younger, had a stroke. Right. So at the age of, I think. Was, did she have a physical disability as a result of the stroke? Yeah. So she was paralyzed, um, right side. So did you care for her? Yeah. As in physically care for physically. her? Physically. So even at a young age, uh, I would wake up and I would make her breakfast, have her washed and get her ready so she could go to a little community thing. How did that feel as a young man? Like, did you want to be on road with your brethren? Um, to be honest, I think at the time, didn't really think about it. I mean, I'm in primary school. Uh, my school was a, probably a six minute walk from home. So getting her ready was always my priority. Okay. So, and do you think that is what instilled you to want to be a husband and a father? And, and just a generally caring person. Yeah, yeah. Um, being coming from such a, a strong uh, family line on both sides. So my mum's side is based primarily in Birmingham. Okay. Uh, my dad's side is based primarily in London. So I was thinking myself. You you often say in your shows um, that you grew up with Gran. Yeah. I wonder how 
that felt to be separated from your mum. Did that ever change your relationship with your mum? No, no. So what happened was um, Monday to Friday, it was me, my gran and my auntie Paula in the house. And then on the weekends, I would go to okay. mum and dad's house. Right. Uh, and then, so I had two houses. Okay, so, so you're I was, like, at school, I was like, oh, I've got two houses. But that compares so differently to a lot of, I say a lot of us. I mean, I mm. didn't grow up with that that wonderful setting around me. And and then how, because you do the Hope Project, mm-hmm. and you work with young men, it's young women as well? As well, yeah. That haven't got that. So how can you relate? Because relate? you've come from something totally different. Um, how can you tell a man that don't have any foundation and feels that gang life is for them because they're looking for community and they're looking for belonging when you don't know about it? Because you've never been in gangs. Uh, you've never done drugs. Like, who are you to tell me that it's going to be okay? Do you know Do you know why? Because you don't have to experience it to know it. I've grown up around enough people, like, imme- like immediate people, who have been through it, who have experienced it, who have lived it, who are still currently living it. Yeah. Um, and you can take learning from that. So it's, you don't always have to walk through a man's shoes to actually learn the experience. Sometimes well, How you would can, you feel if a young person says to you now, like, what do you know? Like, what, you don't know. Yeah, but what the challenges that I give to them is that, all right, you may, because I, I have this all the time. Yeah. They'll say, like, Milk's like, you don't even come from that life. But I'm yeah. like, cool, I don't come from it, but... It doesn't have to be it. Like, I've had my own struggles. And I think, like, when I start talking to them through my, my own journey, mm-hmm. that's where that's where you kind of start to meet the middle ground. Right. Because it's not always about having somebody go through exactly the same thing that you've been through. But you can see that where they've had their challenges and their adversities, and then you can start to see them from maybe a different perspective. What, what would be that thing that you think that helps them meet in the middle? What is a story or a situation that's happened to you? other than your aunt and your grandmother passing mm. that allows them to see that actually he gets this? I think the the main thing is is my journey with regards to radio. Mm. So, you know, I've been doing radio since like 2002, 2003, I started on Delight. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And when I kind of go through the journey with them and explain how much I love radio, but I've, you know, been doing it on pirate radio stations. Because you never years. get paid. No, you never but, get paid. But you also pay subs. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. You don't pay subs. I mean, <laughs> who are you? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna be just. I'll tell you. I mean, hey, you've never paid subs. Um, I think maybe on the light. Do, do you see how people can actually not like you? <laughs> like, honestly, because like there's DJs out here that's been subbing and doing their thing hard, you know, and you're you haven't. And so I think to myself, do you have? Do you have haters? I think, no, I'm going, I'm going back in my mind. As you're talking, uh, we did pay subs and we, as a, as a sound, sweet went to Tim. So that we, was cut up by like four of you, but anyway. Yeah. Um, and then when we moved to Bounce FM, I think I paid subs maybe for the first couple of months. And then I think they, I, and it's never, it's never been the case of, ah, oh, do you know what? I'm not paying subs. All right. It's always been a case of, you know what, Milk, you're cool. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Cause I feel like people have always seen, my value and my work rate. And I'm not saying that nobody else doesn't work hard or whatever, but every station that I've been on, they've always kind of just looked and said, you know what? You bring more than the subs. Yeah. So being on pirate radio, you know, it's illegal, right? Yeah. So you've actually committed crimes. Yeah. So now, big, big, soon to be pastor. <laughs> can we talk about your criminality? <laughs> Because I like the way you just kind of just skim over it. Because what you were doing was not legal. I know it wasn't. But it's my passion. So, okay. It's my, so it's if, my passion. If I've got a young man coming from home and saying that I want to be the next drug dealer of the year because that's my passion. Who are you then to tell him no? Because you've, no, you've committed crimes. I'm, I'm not. But I'm, I would never say to them no. But I'd okay. always try to reevaluate and change the perspective. Yeah. Because... Even though pirate radio is illegal and whatever, um, and it was it was a risk, not only to like those around me, but ultimately them days. Remember, we were still carrying records. Yeah. So the worst thing you wanted to do was go radio. Like I remember when we used to go to pirate radio, and you would you'd be selecting what you're gonna bring. You'd be like, all right, cool. I can afford to bring that, 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 and that, and that, and that, what, and that. Based on what, running. Yeah, because you're thinking. 
worst come to worst, if the feds come or somebody come, yeah, and they come and confess, because I know man that have been on air and feds have come and raided and taken all their equipment, taken their records. Have you ever been there when feds have come? I've never been there. Hey. But let me tell you something. There was a time when there was a meeting, yeah? We had a meeting, a radio station meeting, and literally about 10 minutes after I left, Came. Do you think that's God? Of course it's God. <laughs> of course it's God. You know it's God. It's only God. Mock about. No, because seriously, like that could have been. I know certain men that have that on their DBS, you know. Right. What's it called? Like radio something something. Exactly. Is yeah. you serious? That's not my it's not my portion. It wasn't. Because you've my done portion. a lot of stations and you've been in position. You sometimes you do like five hours at a time i don't know how to fed them just miss you out do you know what if if i'm honest i feel i feel god god's got a lot to do it but i feel like anytime I, I was doing radio especially like when i was on um bounce and on top my show was i was always trying to model my show mm. to kind of be a, a fusion of pirate radio and, and, mainstream. and mainstream radio so i'd always make sure my stuff was edited all of that kind of stuff always make sure there was presentation um, there was features. I was always trying to construct a, a radio show. So I it didn't, I didn't want my show to sound pirate, but I wanted it to have yeah, that energy. Yeah. And then, so you're also a DJ that plays in clubs and you know, you and I have been abroad. We've done a lot of trips Come and on. there are a lot of temptations. Yeah. So you've lived that life. Mm -hmm. Then you chose to get married. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of men your age that's still on that stuff mm -hmm. that feel that they cannot settle down to one woman. What made you decide, do you know what, actually, I want to, I found this woman. What was it about her? Um, the, I think what it was with her, it was, the timing was, it was right. So where were you in the time? Um, so I was working full time at Carphone. Right. I was manager, uh, doing pretty well in my, in my career. Mm -hmm earning decent money, that kind of thing. Um, she came into the store, we met, we spoke, etc. How did you meet? Tell me about that. Um, you chirped her? Well, I didn't, I, I, I didn't really chirp her, but. Well, you did. All right. So again, this is, it's kind of God. Okay. So, um, at the time I was working full time manager at Carphone, but cause of radio, cause I used to do radio on Saturday on, on top. So I kind of scheduled my, my rota so that I wouldn't have to work weekends. Okay. So my assistant manager, uh, would run the shop on a Saturday and Sunday. So I could then go and do radio. Um, this Saturday morning, my assistant manager phones me. He's like, ah, oh, milks. Can't make it. Belly's cutting, man, you know, <laughs> no boom, boom, boom. But you know what? I'll be in by like 10, 10 30. Can you open the store? Now where mom and dad's house is in Ballum, it's like less than 10 minute walk. Right. So I literally just jumped in the car. I, I, I was in my normal clothes, like, cause I, I have no plans on staying. Right. So I've gone down the, down the road, parked up, gone to the shop, opened up. We've got two new starters. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just showing them the ropes and all of that. But primarily I'm in the back office cause I'm not dressed and I'm not really working. 10.30 yeah. come, assistant manager called me again. He's like, oh fam, belly's still cutting. But guess what? I'm going to be here by 12. And I'm like, bro, I need you here by 12 cause I've got to go and do radio. Yeah. Cut long story short, he phoned me like half Betty's eleven. Still and said, Betty's still cutting, so <laughs> I'm vexed now because I can't go and do radio. Yeah, yeah. can't do radio. Um, I've got to stay in the shop. Now, what had happened is that prior that week, she came in on recommendation of a good friend of our Simple Simon. Ah, so Simon's in the yeah, thing too. So Simon's in okay, the thing. Okay, okay. So, so Simon came and got an iPhone 3GS. Okay. From me. And now we're at iPhone 12. 12. Okay. All right, so that, that gives everybody a little, <laughs> yeah. a little time frame, yeah? Yeah. Simon buys an iPhone 3GS from me. He goes to a party, which is a party put on by who is now my sister in law. Okay. Yeah. He's at the party showing off his phone. And then the wife sees the phone. She's like, Oh, I want to get one. He's like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Go and check my guy down in Ballum. He'll sort it all out. So she was like, Balam's far because she's from Southeast. Okay. She'd yeah, like yeah. never ventured. She'd never ventured to Southwest. Southwest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The she'd, divide is yeah, mad. <laughs> she'd never ever done it. But he's like, no, 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 go, we'll sort it out. So 
um, these days was before chipping pins and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I said to Silo, send me your details, run the credit check and all of that, make sure it passed. Once it passed, then she can come in the weekend and just so pick she had up good the thing. credit. So I'm going to be honest, no disrespect to Sai, <laughs> but I, was, I wasn't too confident. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't too confident that she was going to pass Because I know it's other size ladies. Yes, like, you know, you know, I was like, you know, I don't really know. So, but wait, all this time as well, you know, like I was thinking about referrals. So, this is, you're one of your man them. Yeah. That's told you that the girl's coming. This time, when you meet her, you don't know if she was linked to your friend either. No, 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 no. Okay. So, I didn't know. So, um, she comes the week before, gets her phone. Okay. And then in the week now, there's an issue with the transfer of the phone number. Okay. So, now yeah. she's... She's phoned Sai, Sai's phoned me, and I'm saying, right, cool. I'll leave it all for my assistant manager to sort out on the weekend. So now back to the same weekend. She's coming? She's coming. So I'm sitting in the back, and then one of my staff comes in, and he's like, uh, there's a lady outside wants to talk to you about the same car. She wasn't too vexed. Okay. But, um, he, she says, he says, oh, she's outside. I come outside. I'm like, (laughs) raw. Okay, all right. All right, Simon. All right, cool, Simon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Uh. We talk. Boom, boom, boom. She's into. She does music. Yeah. Um. All of that. We. I think I invited her to my thirtieth at the time. Um. And then yeah, that's how we met. And then sparks. And then yeah, sparks. All of that. Next question. Go for it. Your sons were born before you got married. Yeah. So this is another sin. Pasta, I need to talk to you about this sex before marriage business talk that you were running with. How did, how you, this man of God, she's a woman of God. Mm. How did you not get into that? Um, I, I mean, I'm not asking oh, for the, I, in- I, 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 <laughs> but I feel like, do you know what it was? It was challenging, uh, probably more so for her. Okay. Uh, because of her position in church and that. Right. Um, as for me, it wasn't as challenging. Like, you're I, a man. I, yeah. But no, and you know what? Also, I hadn't, I hadn't really given my life to the to, to God at right. the time. I'd, I've obviously grown up in church like a lot of other mm-hmm. people. Um, and I, you know, what I love about my journey, and we won't talk about it because you already know some of this. I know a lot about it. But, um, yeah, I didn't get, I didn't get baptized until way later on. So mm-hmm. I was, it wasn't too much of an issue for me, but, um, it was, it was tough for her. Um, and our family support and whatever was great. Um, and the twins are now 10. This is it. Now your father. Are you having more? All right. It's, it's a 10 year gap now. It's time. No, we're done. You're serious? We're done. We're done. No, no. You don't want your little no, girl. No, I don't. I don't. She With don't your want, smile. No, she don't want no more. I don't want no more. We are done. You're done. We both got twins on each side of the family. Oh, could, could be another so set. It could be another set. And so really, now when you've got people that are dating... What advice are you giving them? Uh, you know, because as I said, you were a DJ and then she had to, I know, because, mm. you know, I married one of them mm. and the challenges of being with a DJ is hard work. Like the trust levels are, are hmm, second to none because mm. we kind of know you are doing your thing out there as well. Mm. And it's not that we don't love ourselves because we're entertaining it, but we hope for better and we hope for change and all of this. How did you change that mindset of, Milk trader DJ to milk trader husband. Um, I think I had to really look at the family, the, the family dynamic. So primarily the boys, mm. do you know what I mean? Like my sons are just everything to me. So Looking at the, the men that have come before me, my dad, my grandparents, my uncles, godparents, like I've come from a line of, of men who really put their family first. So you, you got a, you get to a point where it just becomes the most important thing. And I feel like lockdown really has helped me become a much better man because that's what I want to ask you about husband. marriage you know as you know I'm divorced mm. and it it was really difficult because I didn't get married to get divorced and you mm. know I am a woman of God mm-hmm. that really wanted to be you know 
the neck and him the head and all of those things and it, I feel sometimes you know that I've failed because I haven't li- lived up to mm. those expectations have you ever got to a point in your marriage that you guys have you know even questioned that or is that never ever yeah yeah up? yeah no 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 we've been there we've how been you, there how um, do you get there and get past it um I know it's gonna sound so cliche mm. but it's only God's grace mm. like on the reels what do you think like, got you there to that point that you were questioning? Is this for me or not? Um, I think I think it's a it's a, a different a load of different things. You're you're trying to build yourself. Mm. Your partner's trying to build themselves. You're trying to be maybe parents right. at the same time. Um, you know, you're trying to elevate in your career. She's trying to elevate. You know, the, and he's trying to keep the house together. All of that. So you know, we at some points were like passing ships and that. Yeah. But as I said, I think God had a plan in the sense that this whole lockdown thing really allowed us to not have these major conversations, but it allowed us to grow. Like in the first part of lockdown, so for the the dynamic in my house is that the last four to five years, I'm a lot more flexible than than the wife. Okay. So I pick up the kids from school. She would do the school run because remember I was doing breakfast. Yeah. So even when I was on on top, I'm doing radio from home. Mm. Yeah. The kids are at the dining room table next to me having breakfast. Then she's taking them to work. So I would then come and pick them up, um, get them home, do dinner, all of that kind of stuff, the homework and that. So when lockdown came and she's at home, I'll be honest, the first thing I said was, all right, call cool, your own now. Like, I don't really need to do nothing because mm. you, you, you did it now. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you, you, uh, hello? yeah, yeah, you bought it now. So I think a couple of days. Did you even think that? No, I'm, I can't, I'm, I'm going to be honest. That, that's exactly how I thought. I felt like Mrs. Milks is at home now. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, like, like, I, 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 and I'll be honest, I took, I took my foot off the gas. Jeez. So within the first week, um, I remember it was like a Friday. So it's the first week of lockdown. We're all in the house. She comes to me on a Friday afternoon. I'm, I'm in, in my, my little room. And she says, babe, um, I feel like, I feel like you're not, I feel like, not, that, not, not that I'm not doing anything, but I feel like you've kind of taken your foot off the gas. And mm-hmm. remember, I'm, I'm still working full time. Um, she's a customer service director for, for a development. Yeah. And she's, she's, um, a mother of mother two. Of two. <laughs> um, she's musical director and head of, you know, the praise and worship team yeah. at Tab Worship. Um, so she's like, babe, I, I just feel like I need a little bit more support. You're lucky you got that, no, that conversation. No, the so thing is, see me. yeah, but no, and, but the thing is, the thing is, I think the reason why I got that conversation is because I do my part. Right. I've okay. always done my part. Yeah. So this is um, the first, like, little... this was, this was the first kind of time I was like, do you know what? Let me just, Take Kick back, look mm. a bit, and then she came with me to the com- with the conversation. And I'm not saying like most men, but the way I deal with that kind, of... that's how I reacted. See, yeah, you, that, yeah, that's most men. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say it's most men. But literally, an hour later, I'm downstairs in the kitchen. I was I think I was washing dishes or doing something in the kitchen, and then she came to me. She's like, "Look, I don't want us to have to like." I don't want us to have to have this conversation in the sense of whenever I come and talk to you, there's always like a, a huff and a cough. Oh, it's the worst. And I had to really check myself. Like mm. in that moment, I said, you know what? Let me just check myself. Yeah. Because, but that's growth. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like I had to really like, do you know what? And this is April. So we don't know how long yeah, this yeah, whole yeah. lockdown thing is. And but then weren't you made redundant around the same time? I was, yeah. So I was made redundant later in March last year. Um, and then all of the, the work I had lined up. But then does that, did that ever make you feel less of a man when you lost your job? If I'm honest, in my own head, yes. Mm. But she's never made me feel like less of a man. That's beautiful. She's never made me feel like that. So... So even my own personal insecurities, she'd never put. But that did on that me. manifest in the way that you dealt with your relationship? Um, no, I don't. I don't think it really. Those things don't affect me in that kind of. I don't. 
put it out there. Like I'm more of a, I internalize everything. Right. So I'll, I'll kind of put that on me. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, after a day or two, I'm like, cool, let's go. Yeah. Like, let's hustle. What, what do you think is the biggest challenge in, let's say, long term relationships and marriages? Um, I think is is not falling into the the kind of the pattern. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And but it's difficult because, as you said, a lot of relationships are ships in the night. Yeah, we get we have to. We're hustling. We're working. We're trying to be ourselves. And is it about making the date nights a quality time? Yeah, like like you 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 do that, but I feel like you got to make a little bit more effort just in the day, like. You know what I mean? We're in the house together. Mm. Um, I've built a home studio. She's got an office downstairs. Sometimes we don't see each other mm. and we're in the same house. But if that happens for two days, yeah. just know, say, the third day or the third morning, it's not that it's a dress, but there's, there's, a, there's a longer hug or there's a bit more love shown or whatever. Do you know what, babe? I ain't seen you for the last two days. Let's, like, let's... Watch this. So or, Valentine's Day came and you did Bad Boy Show. Thank you. But you was gone for hours. And you know what I was thinking about? If I was your missus, yeah. I'd be raging right now. Yeah. Because you was gone for like four hours. No, well, if you, if you think about it. And the morning. I did Sunday service. Yeah. Uh, and then I did four and a half, nearly five hours on Twitch. For me, that was unacceptable. I know. Well, I, but not for her. See, she's a different type of woman. Not for her. Know? She was calm with it. She's calm with it. Cause she she understands. Mm. Not saying that you don't. Yeah, yeah, you just said you just tried to no, like give I'm, my ex yeah, ammunition. Yeah. No, like, yeah, no. she never understands. I'm she not, doesn't I'm get not saying that. She doesn't know. But what I am saying is that she understands the the vision that I'm that I'm striving for. And mm. to be honest, at the moment, she's probably one of the few people that can only see it and understand it. Right. So she understands that we don't. I mean, we do Valentine's, but like not in the. Like, we just don't, like, we might normally go out for dinner or whatever, but it's never been that much of a pressure. Do you know what I mean? I always make sure she gets a bunch of flowers and that kind of thing. Um, normally, me and the boys would have cooked her breakfast. But because of this whole lockdown, the, the timings are out, Sunday service. Yeah. And then just even little things like starting service a little bit later. Like, so what I noticed, like, so I know I normally meant to start Sunday service at nine, but I think like two weeks ago... Mm-hmm. It was at like five to nine and she was still sleeping. Uh, one of the boys was in the bed sleeping as well. So I just said, you know what? Let me just send out a little message and move the time to so tell her. sacrifice all over the place and balance. Yeah. So like she just gets it. So she knows if I'm going to be spending that much time on Twitch and streaming and all of that, she knows that that's going to the greater good because at some point, there's going to be some final, some kind of financial reward or I can say, do you know what? Two months time, the bills are paid. And it's a, it is a compromise because I think that's, that's the main thing about relationships and whatever. And so I asked you in terms of just like finishing off our relationship chat. I noticed like, for example, on Valentine's Day, there were big displays. People rented apartments and put nine million roses and, and, don't you think we have a responsibility as influencers not to make people feel crap about their lives? Because for me, not only as a single woman that's still looking for a partner, just just saying. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I thought I'd put that out there. Yeah. Um, it, it, if I was in a relationship and I and was a man and I've got my girl looking at these things, do you not think it's irresponsible? I, I don't think it's irresponsible, but I feel like there's, there's a pressure to, to do so. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't post anything, yeah. um, on Valentine's Day. Um, the day before Valentine's Day, we all got in the car, me, the wife and the kids. Um, I'm part of the Mentivity, um, exhibition. Um, big up to Mentivity. And that picture. Oh, your skin be yeah. looking. Ooh. Yeah. Big up, big up to my Mentivity mm. guys. Big up to, um, Sage, Leon, Tyson. Um, mm. so they've, they've got an outdoor exhibition. So I wanted to take the family to go and see that. So we all jumped in the car. Like so, Saturday morning, tidied up the house. Everybody was up. The boys were hoovering. Wife was in the kitchen. I'm doing bits, and we jumped in the car. Went up there in the freezing cold. Had a good time. Went and got some food. Come home, 
chilled out as a, and just as a family. Um, and then we all went to bed and I remember us going to bed and saying, that was an amazing day, you know, nice. babe. Like it was just a nice family day out, even during the whole lockdown thing. And then obviously Sunday comes Valentine's Day. I'm um, doing my thing and whatever. But I feel like, cause, cause we made that effort as a family on the Saturday it and it wasn't really planned, planned. Cause mm-hmm. it was meant to have gone out the week before. But just cause we kind of spent that time as a family together, I feel that's where the, the balance kind of came from. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? Like, if I want to just post the family up or the wife, I'll do so whenever I feel to. I don't feel like I have to. Do you to. think people should stop posting up their whole business? Um, I, I think people just need to be a bit mindful. Mm. Just, you like, you don't have to post everything. Mm. Um, you know, for me, I, I think, I, I think I've calmed down on posting. Okay. Um, when I look at my, you know, my timeline, you know, maybe a little while before, but that's obviously different because of lockdown, etc. But I'm, you know, now the content that I'm putting out there is a lot more to do with the stuff that I'm doing in the community, etc. You know, even last night I did an Instagram live with the Metropolitan Police. It's important um, stuff. Yeah. Because that's that's the, you know, as I said, as an underdog, you've now got a platform. Because one of the things about the journey is I look at other people, other DJs or whatever, they've got their blue ticks. And we're very, very clear <laughs> that you don't have your blue tick. <laughs> <laughs> and why? I, d- I don't know. I don't know. I don't Do you think know. people don't rate you? Um, no, I don't. Do I used, I, I used to think that. Okay. I used to think that for a really long time that the, the circuit, the circuit that, 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 that we're part of didn't rate me. Why do you think that was? Um, because I was different. Do you think people thought you was a fraud? No. Because I've had conversations and it's like, how is this dude now? doing Sunday service, whatever, and he was out there winding up the soaker on his toes. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, two, two, you've just come from that life to that life. Do you not think that people may look at you as a hypocrite or a, a fraud? They may they may do, but I don't think... I think I've always made um, my my faith and my relationship no. with, with God and, and how I feel about that visible always. Mm. So... People was calling me past the trade before we was doing Sunday service. Right. Do you know what I mean? You know, even when you hear me play in a club or whatever, 90% of it is going to be radio edits. <laughs> yes. Because consciously in my, in, in my spirit, it just didn't, it just doesn't feel right. And you know, when you're around you, sometimes I'm on other people's lives and I would be throwing up the little dancing girl. <laughs> And then when you enter the room, I'm like, yeah. oh, Every, Lord. Everybody, yeah, yeah. I oh, can't oh. do it. I can't do it's it. It's even like Uncle Milks is here now. We've got to behave. <laughs> um, I remember one time I covered Zess on, on yeah. Blue Light. <laughs> and because like, like, he didn't tell anybody, so it just came on the screen and I was there and everybody was like, like oh, boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we do this slow yeah, jam sex yeah. thing? Um, <laughs> like fornicating yeah. and all sorts on the, on, the, on the screen. Like, it's a lot of pressure, though, because you're still a man that has manly thoughts no yeah but i think ultimately um it's it's part of the journey Mm -hmm. like anybody that's walking in life regardless where where you're walking or how you're walking there's there's progression i feel like Mm -hmm. now when we eventually come out of lockdown or whatever i don't feel like i have the the urge or the need to be in Mm -hmm. clubs yeah as much i really don't like i just don't feel like i need to be, be there and i think spiritually you know, that's been something that's probably really come out of the last mm. um, 10 to 11 months. I think what will happen is it will be a case of it have to be a really good opportunity. For you to do that. Yeah. So like no disrespect to like any promoters or whatever, but I'm not coming out of my house. When you say opportunity, is it a financial opportunity? No, I think sometimes it's 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 got to be an opportunity, whether it be financial or you can see it, you know, Helping towards a, a long term goal, yeah. So, you've hit the goal. <laughs> so this, I'm so proud that this is our first chat. So soon after your first one extra showcase, I want to call it because, to be honest, it was a performance. <laughs> it was mix and praise, yeah, on Sunday on BBC One Extra, yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah. 
How do you really feel about that? Um, I feel like nothing before it's time. Right. I do. I feel like nothing before it's time. Um, for those who don't know, I've been knocking on the door. Like when I say knocking, I've had opportunities to do stuff at One Extra mm-hmm. before. Um, big up to Ace and Viz. Uh, big up to Rampage, Trouble T, Mike Anthony. Big up to G Money. He used to be on Baseline and he went to One Extra and now he's on Homeboy Radio in uh, Gambia. Charlene White, mm. who's now on like, you know what I mean, on ITV. Yeah. Um, all of these people were opening doors for me back in the day to do like little bits and pieces on One Extra. And there have been so many times where like Ace would be like, oh, Milks, do a demo. Mm. I've heard X, Y and Z and send me the demo and I've done the demo and the demos like just never got anywhere. So... I got to a point in my radio career where I was like, that door is not meant to be open. And, and I was cool. You kind of accepted it. No, yeah. And, and but I, would you say that you were defeated then? Cause no, that sounds quite defeatist. No, I just, I just felt like, I just felt like the, the journey that I was on, that wasn't meant to be open. Like I, I was on bounce and I got approached and did some bits at that time. I moved to on top. I was on, I was out on top for 11 years doing breakfast for seven years and I always just felt creatively that if I was to go to somewhere like One Extra they would really restrict me so maybe that's maybe that's God's reasoning why so then also I thought to myself how dare they give you half an hour I mean I'm not gonna lie I thought it's time you have your own show I mean so even when the half hour see this is my problem probably I can't see the little blessings yeah but I'm like nah like half hour now in these actual show like the proper show the proper two hours what's going on here how do you stay humble in that because me I would have said uh this not now no do you know do you know how when you've been waiting 19 years to get that email like in 19 years you learn like for some people they could have learned to become even more arrogant or mm. more boastful whatever but i just feel like the journey that i've been on and the thing is all of the time i've been trying to get to one extra or hear from one extra especially like in the last say 10 years it hasn't really happened yeah so for it to happen on the basis of doing something that God has told me to do. Yeah. Like, to do Sunday service and then to, you know, for us to come up with Mix and Pray, we got to my cousin Warner, my manager, like, he came up with the term. Yeah. Like, he was on the phone, he's like, fam, like, yeah, man, it's like Mix and Pray's. Because then that's another question I had to ask you. Go on. Because some of the songs that you mix are secular, Mm -hmm. of a different meaning. Mm Mm-hmm. How can you merge Christianity with secular beats of songs that may be sexualized, for example? Mm. How do you sit with that? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still quite mindful. Okay. I'm, I'm always, I'm always really mindful about what I'm kind of putting together. So if I've got a gospel track, um, I'm not going to put it with, um, let's say the gully slim rhythm, which is the good as <laughs> rhythm. I'm not going to put it with that. <laughs> Because, you know what I mean? You don't want no one patting their things to... No, 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 no. No, you can't be patting your thing and you're, and you're singing along to Kirk Franklin. It's not... It's, just, <laughs> it's not that. It's, it's, it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. But it's it's more of just a vibe. Yeah. It's more of a vibe. Um, And I think over the years, my, my ear's been trained to hear things um sonically in, in key. Okay. So that's why a lot of the time... I don't think about the key, but if I'm, if I'm playing a song... I can hear another song in my head and be like, oh, that's of a similar key or there's something similar in, in, in the, in the track or in the note. That the is a gift. You've got that gift. I think I can't even hear that, but you heard it. Yeah. And so those that are needing inspiration to pursue passions, mm. what, how can, how can you help them? So someone's at home now and they're wanting to be, you know what? Let's choose me. Okay. I have been um, hosting since I was 19 with Eddie Caddy. I am now 39 this year. That's 20 years. I've had the ZZ Mills, the all sorts, the Myers come up after me. Mm-hmm. I've even had Judy Love come mm-hmm. up after me. I remember doing a show and I was hosting and Judy said to me, 
I want to be like you one day, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I love the way that you host. And look where she is now. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think to myself, now, this is a liberty. Mm-hmm. What, where's my time? What, like, I'm done with it. I'm done. I'm not doing no more shows. Then I come out. I retire for, like, six months and then yeah. I'm back. How how can you encourage someone like myself to keep on going, knowing that the people that are around them have come up after them and showboating out here? I, but I, you know what it is? I feel there's there's a lane there's a lane for everybody. Okay. Um, and for those who are like passionate about their their thing, whatever their thing is, um, you you got to know that you've got to create your own lane. Okay. And I think that's that's why. I can kind of going back to one of the things you said earlier. I think that's why I felt like my peers didn't really rate me mm. in that regard because I was a little bit different. Right. Do you know what I mean? And we'd be in a rave and then I'd mix the Spice Girls mm. with a funky house or I'd mix gummy bears with, with Pow and <laughs> yeah. do it live in the rave. Yeah. Like, so you just got to know that your lane is, is your lane and you can't, you can't do ZZ and you can't do Judy, but you can do camp. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you, you just got to own it mm. and, and don't be afraid of it. Cause I think the moment that I really, started to just accept where God wanted to take me in regards to like going out and playing gospel. Mm. Like the funny thing is I'd always played gospel. So anytime I'd I'd done breakfast on any station, I always would start my show with a gospel track. Yes. And I I got that from Angie Greaves. Okay. So I remember listening to Angie Greaves when she used to do breakfast on choice. She would always start her show with a gospel track. And that's always been part of my journey. So I'd always done that. But to be able to like just go out and confidently say, oh, do you know what? I'm going to do a Sunday service. And again, kind of going back to a lot of the things you said, you know, some people may have thought like, but right, Milks is a cool guy, but I've seen man, you know, jump up at carnival and <laughs> all in it. Like, and, but like when it's, you know, it's not like they've seen, like I'm always at carnival or I'm playing out or whatever, but, I feel like God was just like, look, this is your time. You don't, you don't know what it is and you don't know where I'm about to take you, but just be obedient. And I think that was what it was for me. So kind of letting somebody else know that you, you got to keep going because I've been, I've been DJing since 1995. And only now you've reached it. And, and it's only now I've, I've reached a certain point and it, it's not here. Where is there? I don't know. Why don't you know? I don't know because... Have you not had God talk to you? And he told you what's, what's going on? Nah. You didn't get that? Nah. I didn't... I, you didn't I, pick I, up? Did I, you miss the I, I, I didn't get the page. Nothing. <laughs> you didn't. I didn't. I didn't get that pigeon or nothing. Because looking back, if I look over the last 10 months, if you'd said to me yeah. that my most popular show on of all online time. is uh, even more so than breakfast. Yeah. And I mean, my breakfast show... I mean, I believe is legendary. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, is... and the whole kind of coming up with Milk Trade's motivation. Yeah. And doing all of that and, you know, becoming a, a, a motivational speaker, winning awards, mm. uh, and, and taking it on the road. All of that was just preparing me for this, for Sunday service. And then what I know is that Sunday service is already preparing me for the next stage. So the next stage, are you going to be ordained? Who knows? I don't, I want exclusives. I think, no. You're on my platform and I need some tea. I need you to spill this tea. Are you going to be ordained? I'm a, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I haven't even really thought about it like that. I think you should. I, I don't know. Because there's only so much we can use Steve's videos. Well, you know? no, no. So, hold on. <laughs> so, so did you notice this week? <laughs> yeah. Sunday you, gone. You tried it. I, I know. Like, Sunday yes, gone. Sunday, Sunday gone. I said, no, we're not using yeah. no videos. We're not using no <laughs> separate body. I just kind of gave so the word. So that was like your first that, sermon? That, that was like my first Ooh, sermon. Oh, that's exciting. I thought so. And I thought, that, oh. That was my first. You tried that whole thing, I'm running out of time business, but I knew that was the setup. I thought, yeah, cause I, I, no, I Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite methodical when it comes I to the radio you. things. And how did that feel? Um, it, do you know what? It didn't feel that different because I'd already been speaking openly and publicly for a long time. So I'd been doing it on... On, on top and on when I was on flex as well for mo- milk trade motivation. So I've been kind of doing it for a long time. And again, I feel like the whole milk trade motivation thing was preparing me 
for Sunday service. And as I said, Sunday service is really preparing me for and the next stage. And what role do you think you have in motivating others? What do you think is your responsibility? Um, it's to really, not to motivate, but to to inspire and to give people hope. Mm. I think that's, that's why um, the hope program and stuff like that is really important because... I think hope is something that we don't really think about too often. Mm-hmm. We focus a lot on motivation and the hustle and all of that, but sometimes you just need a bit of hope. You, you need that, that faith the size of a mustard seed. So what if we have people here that are not Christians, mm-hmm. that follow you, that believe in you, but they don't necessarily, you know, they're not believers. How do you find that people that don't have faith can have hope? Um, You can. I think because... In, when you look at it, they're very similar. Um, sometimes you may even kind of say that they're, they're, they could be even in some circumstances the same thing. It's just worded differently. I feel I've always had faith and, you know, hope that I will get here. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful. And, I, and to be honest, you don't have to be religious to, to have hope. Sometimes you could just see it in somebody else. So like when I'm sitting down with some of the young people or I'm teaching them how to DJ and and Mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, I look at DJ S-Ray and... She is a work of art. She's she's, how old? She's 11. She just turned turned 11 this week. She is a remarkable DJ. I mean... I'm not even going to say she's a child. She's a DJ. I mean... Like she makes me well, Joe. I'm telling you. Do you know how many times I've wanted to DJ and but never oh, felt man. not felt confident to do it or not felt I felt scared and that's the thing fear often holds us back. Yeah. But there's something beautiful about the innocence of children that that sometimes they don't have that. Yeah. Some of them are. But before we close, I would like you to give a message to anyone that is out there that is feeling downtrodden that is feeling overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. that is feeling undervalued, Mm -hmm. that is feeling different Mm -hmm. and that they can't find their role in this world that we are Mm -hmm. in, what would you say to them? Um, I'd say to them, everything you've just said, I've felt. Mm. Um, And I'm sure there's going to be times in my life where I'm going to feel them again. Mm. Um, Because I don't want to give anybody the, the image that, I live this perfect life and whatever, cause it's really not. But, um, I've got some, some things and people around me that have really embedded in me to keep going. And even if you don't have those people, I feel it's important to look to others. So if somebody can watch this and come away from this and be like, do you know what? Instead of just the whole, ah, oh, do you know what? That most guy is all right. But if they can look and say, do you know what, Ra, my man's been grinding that long since like 95 and then he's been on radio since 2002 mm. and he's only now mm. getting to one extra, like, then maybe i got to keep grinding. Yeah. Maybe it's not my time just yet. And I feel like that's that's what I want my, my legacy to be. I want people to see my legacy and see what I've done and and use it as an example and really learn from it. Um, and understand that, you know, you've got to keep pushing, you've got to keep working, you've got to keep striving, but also don't miss the small things. Like, I know it sounds very cliche in the world of motivation and in inspiration or whatever, but it's, it's the journey, it's the process, not the destination. Like, what I've learned in the last 10 to 11 months on this journey being in lockdown has been like, Life changing for me. Like, and, and I've, I've said this when we're on Sunday service. My health is, is a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, my mental state, my mental well being is better. The peace in my life is better. My marriage is better. Mm-hmm. My relationship with my children is better. Yeah. The relationship I have with myself is yeah. better. The relationship I have with God is better. The relationship I have with money is better. Like, just generally, I've, I've been able to use this period to just better myself under some really challenging circumstances, being made redundant, having 27 plus weddings booked in a diary, which financially would have carried me well into this year, plus other functions, etc., 
all being cancelled. being cancelled. How do you how do you go from that Today. actually not having any money? I'm gonna look dead in which camera am I on? This one I'm gonna look dead in this camera. Yeah? I'm gonna tell somebody right now. In May, May, I got I had no no June, I had no money. I got the payout from car phone. I've been there just under 21 years. Yeah, but because I've gone part time in the last couple of years, they gave me a payout of just under four grand. When we was hoping that I was gonna get like a a 20, 25. Because I'd been speaking to a couple of people who'd been in the company even a, a little sh- shorter than me and they were getting some good pee. So how do you go from that and saying, raw, the money's done, the savings is done and still be here? And I, I can only come on here and say it's by the grace of God. It's only God that, that's got me here. So I don't know what your religious beliefs are or what your background is or whatever, but I'm here to tell somebody that it's only by God's grace why I'm here because at that point I was like Phew. then he, he gave me the hope program he gave me my own business I'm now working with you know people in Croydon I'm working with the the, the Met yeah. the, I just had one of my friends uh Rick Flynn who's a police officer on my IG me like I'm obviously I'm not I've never been from the roads or whatever, <laughs> yeah. but I'm a black man. Yeah. So for me to go on on an Instagram live and just say to the world, you know what, I'm here and I'm doing this stuff and I'm proud about it. Like I never thought that would happen. Like I'm working with Crystal Palace Football Club. Like literally, big, I, I can phone stuff. I can phone I can phone the, the charity director and say like I'm, I'm gonna come in. Can I have a meeting? Can I have one of the offices? Yeah, milk, no problem. Like. Things have changed. That's God's so that's, grace. That's, that's, that's God's grace and that's hope. And I hope what Milk Tray has told you today changes things for you. Because it's even if it's about just one person. Even if it's just, just one. one. That's all we need. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you for having me. You've motivated me. Come on now. Hey. I need to be on your next month. Anyway, we won't talk about that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my underdog, DJ Milk Tray. <laughs>